I in the heart of a shimmering lake, a small island vents a plume of steam and ash into the sky. This isn't a fiery flowing river of lava. It's a sudden, violent hiss, an explosion of steam, water, and rock. On the evening of January 9th, 2026, this is what happened at Ta'al Volcano. For about four minutes, it blasted a 900-meter-high plume into the air before falling silent again. It might seem small, but this event, called a Frito-Magmatic Eruption, is a troubling sign. It was followed by a sharp spike in underground tremors, with 20 volcanic earthquakes and 14 volcanic tremor episodes recorded in a single 24-hour period. That's a significant jump from the quiet days before. This isn't a volcano waking up with a roar. It's stirring with a series of unsettling rumbles, and for the millions of people who live in its shadow, including in the capital city of Manila just 60 kilometers away, any sign of life from this volcano is a cause for concern. Scientists are watching around the clock because they know Tal's quiet whispers can be the prelude to a devastating scream. This is Tal, one of the most active and dangerous volcanoes in the Philippines. It's a geologic paradox, a volcano inside a lake that was formed by an even bigger, ancient volcano. Its beauty is deceptive. Tal has erupted more than 39 times since 1572, and its history is written in destruction. In early January 2026, after a period of relative calm, Ta'al began showing renewed signs of unrest. The activity prompted the Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology, or FIVOLCS, to reiterate its warnings. The volcano remains at alert level one, which means low-level unrest. But don't let the name fool you. Even at this level, sudden steam-driven explosions can happen any time, which is why the main volcano island is a strict no-go zone, a permanent danger zone. This isn't a hypothetical threat. The memory of January 2020 is still fresh when a sudden eruption sent a colossal ash cloud across the region, shutting down Manila's international airport, covering towns in thick gray dust and forcing hundreds of thousands to flee. So, what is actually happening inside Ta'al right now? Why are these small, steam-driven bursts and underground quakes making scientists so wary? To understand the danger, we have to look at the unique and violent science of this very complex volcano. The event on January 9th wasn't a classic eruption with flowing lava. It was a freedomagmatic eruption, and it's one of Tayal's deadly specialties. This type of explosion happens when hot magma comes into contact with water. Think of a drop of water hitting a sizzling hot pan, but on a terrifyingly massive scale. At Taal, there's no shortage of water. The main crater itself holds a lake, and the entire volcano is surrounded by the larger Taal Lake. When magma rising from deep within the earth gets close to the surface, it can heat the groundwater or interact directly with lake water. The water instantly flashes into steam, expanding to over 1,700 times its original volume. This rapid expansion is what causes the explosion, blasting a mix of steam, ash, and fragmented rock into the air. These bursts are notoriously difficult to predict. The one on January 9th, which lasted for four minutes, was preceded by a seismic signal just six minutes earlier. It's a stark reminder of how quickly the situation can change. Following that burst, the ground started talking. In the 24 hours between January 10th and 11th, Vivalx recorded a sudden spike of 20 volcanic earthquakes and 14 volcanic tremors. Volcanic tremors are continuous seismic vibrations, like a humming deep underground, which often indicate that magma or gas is on the move. This recent activity suggests that something is shifting in the volcano's plumbing system. While the volcano's sulfur dioxide, SO2, emissions have remained relatively low at around 150 tons per day as of January 8th, scientists watch this number closely. A sudden increase could signal that fresh gas-rich magma is rising, which could lead to more powerful eruptions. For the communities around Tal Lake, this is a familiar and frightening dance. The volcano is a designated Decade Volcano one of 16 in the world identified as deserving of particular study because of its history of large destructive eruptions and its proximity to populated areas. 
To understand the stakes, you only need to look at its history. The eruption of 1754 was its most violent in recorded history. It lasted for nearly seven months, burying four towns under ash and rock and permanently altering the landscape. In 1911, a devastating eruption killed over 1,300 people, with its effects felt across the entire volcano island. And in 1965, an eruption completely changed the island's shape, killing around 200 people as it blasted sideways across the lake. But for the current generation, the benchmark for disaster is January 2020. The eruption began with phreatic or steam-driven explosions that rapidly escalated into a full-blown magmatic eruption. A massive column of ash and lightning shot 15 kilometers into the sky, blanketing everything for miles around. It forced the evacuation of hundreds of thousands of people and caused billions of pesos in damage to agriculture and infrastructure. That event showed how quickly Tal can go from low-level unrest to a national emergency. It's why Five Volks, the nation's geological watchdog, monitors every tremor and steam plume with such intensity. Their work in monitoring volcanoes like Tal and Pinatubo has saved countless lives by providing timely warnings that enable evacuation. The current activity is a test of that system, a constant reminder that Tal's serene beauty hides a powerful and violent potential. Understanding the science behind events like this is critical. If you find this kind of deep dive into natural phenomena important and want to see more investigations into the forces shaping our world, take a moment to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. Your support allows us to continue creating this content. Now, let's get back to the scientists on the ground and the clues they're uncovering. Inside the Five Volks observatories, scientists are in a state of constant vigilance. Their job is to read Tal's subtle language using a network of high-tech instruments to look for clues about what might happen next. One key indicator is ground deformation. Using GPS and tilt meters, they can detect if the volcano is inflating or swelling, which would indicate that magma is accumulating beneath the surface. Another is seismic activity. The recent spike in volcanic earthquakes and tremors is a significant clue that the system is under stress. Then there's geochemistry. Scientists analyze the gas emissions like sulfur dioxide and even the chemistry of the crater lake itself. Changes in temperature, acidity, or gas composition can provide hints about what's happening in the magmatic system below. While the scientists analyze their data, the human story unfolds around the lake. The 2020 eruption was a harsh lesson, and the fear it instilled lingers. For the fishermen who rely on the lake and the farmers who work the fertile volcanic soil, the volcano is both a source of livelihood and a constant threat. Life for the residents of Batangas province continues, but with an eye always on the island in the lake. The recent steam-driven burst and the underground rumbling are a topic of conversation in local markets and cafes. It's a state of watchful waiting. The government and disaster response agencies are on alert, ready to act if the situation escalates. For now, the most crucial instruction is the one that is hardest to enforce, staying out of the permanent danger zone. People are forbidden from setting foot on Volcano Island, a place that is beautiful, dangerous, and utterly unpredictable. With the ground trembling and the crater letting out sudden bursts of steam, the unavoidable question is, what's next? The current situation, Alert Level 1, is already fraught with risk. The Frito magmatic bursts, though small and brief, are life-threatening to anyone on the island. But this is far from the worst-case scenario. The ultimate fear is a repeat of 2020, or worse. So what could cause this situation to escalate? The primary trigger would be the significant ascent of new magma to the surface. The current activity is believed to be driven by the interaction of existing shallow magma and water. If a larger, gas-rich batch of magma were to rise from deep within the Earth, it could lead to a much more powerful, explosive eruption. That's why the recent seismic spike is so concerning to scientists. Are the earthquakes and tremors simply the volcano breathing? Or are they the sounds of rock fracturing as a new body of magma forces its way upward? This is the critical question Five Alks is trying to answer. A larger eruption would have devastating consequences. 
It could generate powerful pyroclastic flows, fast-moving currents of hot gas and volcanic matter that could race across the water of the lake. It would also produce heavy ashfall capable of blanketing not just the immediate provinces, but also Metro Manila, a sprawling metropolis of over 13 million people. For now, the giant is stirring, not raging. The January 9th eruption was a reminder of the power simmering just beneath the surface. Scientists continue their 24-7 vigil, listening to the mountain's heartbeat, trying to decipher its intentions. The communities around the lake live in a state of perpetual preparedness, hoping for the best while knowing they live beside one of nature's most volatile forces. The question isn't if Tal will erupt again, but when and how much warning it will give. The events at Tal are a powerful reminder of the dynamic and sometimes dangerous world we live in. What are your thoughts on living near such a powerful force of nature? Share your perspective in the comments below. And if you've learned something new today, please consider sharing this video with others to help raise awareness about what's happening. Thanks for watching.